Hi there, welcome to the new lecture on designing Azure Data Lake and this lecture is part of your designing data integration solutions. So when we talk about the designing side, let's first understand uh, how this data lake as a storage solution that you could you know give for your company. Let's take as the previous company there's a tailwind as a test company. Let's say they have a multiple data source uh, from a website to the point of sales, POS machines that they have. So from a website to uh, a POS devices and more recently from a social media also they wanted to you know utilize the uh, trend uh, and they wanted to integrate that social media sites information with you, their IoT device. I'm just trying to explain here a scenario or the customer requirement. So uh, initially they have the multiple source data from a website to POS. Now they wanted to go for the social media sites to the IoT devices. Uh, they are interested in Azure to you know, provide a solution to analyze their business data. So that's where they are coming up. And in this role, you will provide guidance on Azure. Uh, how can you, how, how can they can, you know, enhance their existing business intelligence solution or, and because of their needs, you might have to, you know, uh, design in a better way to you know plan to recommend a Azure data lake storage so the data lake storage provides definitely a repository where you could you know upload and store huge amount of unstructured data with eye towards high performance big data analytics but now let's understand my friends here data lake storage what exactly it is it is the data lake is a repository of data which is stored in its natural format you, and it is usually as a blobs or files it's going to store and as your data lake storage is a comprehensive scalable and cost effective data lake solution for your big data analytics uh, which is built into Azure and Azure Data Lake Storage combines a file system with a storage platform to help quickly identify insights into your data and currently the implementation Azure Data Storage Generation 2 is the one which they are using for their Azure Blob Storage capabilities to optimize it specially uh, for analytic of their workloads so this is how uh, you could you know go for integration uh, with the data lake and which is going to enable analytic performance high availability security durability capability of azure storage so now uh, you understand about the requirement and you also understand what exactly data lake storage and uh, the current version where it's going to implementation of azure data lake storage services gonna use the generation 2 now let's understand the features of the data lake storage so there are a couple of features we could you know talk about it uh, the first one would be the data storage so when we say the data storage as your data lake storage can store any type of data by using data in a native format we told that with the support for any data format and a massive data size data lake storage can work with structure structured or semi structure or unstructured data it can work with uh, any kind of you know data type we talked about this in the module one about the data types if not you could you know go through and check out about the structure semi structure and unstructured data types now about the data access so azure data lake storage is uh, primarily designed to work with hadoop and all frameworks that uses the uh, apache hadoop distributed file system or hdfs file system in short as the data access layer now about the cost data cost the cost com uh, cost comes definitely as a priority for most of the companies as your data lake storage is priced at the blob storage level so the data again comes on a storage level and coming back to the performance uh, the data lake storage supports a high through output for input or output system with intensive analytics and data movement it's going to support that performance and coming back to the security when we talk about the security as a feature uh, Azure Data Lake storage it's going to support the access model uh, for the RBAC definitely role based access management and also uh, it's going to support the portable operating system interface which is nothing but uh, for the Unix purpose you would you know call it as the uh, 
POSIX, which is the Portable Operating System Interface for Unix, and also it supports the Access Control List or ACLs, ACLs. And uh, that's about the security side. And coming back to the data redundancy, uh, data lake storage utilizes the Azure Blob replication model. These models uh, provide a data redundancy in a single data center with a locally redundant storage. And coming back to the uh, scalability of your data uh, from the data lake, Azure Data Lake uh, Storage offers a massive uh, storage concept uh, which is going to accept the numerous data types for analytics. And coming back to the data analysis, data analysis is a framework that is going to use definitely HDFS as their data access layer can directly access. So these are the couple of uh, features that's going to uh, useful uh, from the data lake storage. Now let's understand how Azure Data Lake Storage works. There are three important phases are the steps that can be uh, talked about how Azure Data Lake works. So Azure Data Lake storage works on a three different things, right? So the first thing, if we take it to the uh, ingesting data, which is nothing but it also have, you know, a couple of different type of data. For example, ad hoc data, which can process your data to ingest data. For example, the you could use a AZ copy, the command, or CLI, PowerShell, or Storage Explorer. These things you could you know use it uh, for your data purpose. This is this comes as ad hoc. Other one would be the relational data. When we talk about the relational data, definitely um, like the Azure Data Factory is the one best service you could use it uh, for enabling the storing, the transferring your data, and uh, that's. Uh, that also includes your cosmetic uh, or Cosmos DB or SQL database or managed instance example. All of that you know can be utilized. Now the last type would be within the ingest data, or uh, streaming data. When we talk about the streaming, like you could use the applications like Apache Storm on Azure HD Insight or uh, Azure Stream Analytics services. So these things can be used. And now when we talk about the bulk. A data processing so this is how it looks like now we talked about the ingest data that's how this design or this specific thing internal components now let's look at the accessing the storage data so when we talk about the accessing stored data this is nothing but you need how you are going to access so you could definitely use the storage explorer and storage explorer is a standard application with the graphical interface uh, with the GUI you can access your data lake storage data but you could also definitely use with a PowerShell or Azure CLI and uh, HDFS, a CLI or other programming languages uh, with the help of SDKs for accessing the data can be possible. Now, when we talk about the secure setting the access co access control, you could definitely use the Azure RBAC or ACL uh, or you can Im implement these any of them or both of them to get a uh, or set it up your setting up you know access control let's understand when to use the azure data lake storage now there are you know three different questions that we could you know ask ourselves like the first thing would be the from a requirement point of view when you need a data warehouse on the cloud for managing large volumes of data you could you know use this that's the first uh, business case so if I want to you know, explain that Azure Data Lake Storage runs on a virtual hardware on the Azure platform and making storage uh, storage scalable, fast and reliable without increasing massive charges. So it, it separates the storage cost from computing uh, cost because the storage cost again stores in a different place and the computing cost is a separate. So as your data volume grows, only your storage requirements would you know change not the computing platform that's where you know one of the requirement we can talk the second one uh, would be when we look at when you need to manage a diverse collection of data types such as json files or csv or log files or other diverse of formats you might be you know, utilizing so as your data lake storage is going to enable you data democratization uh, for your organization by sorting all of your data formats including any raw data or a single location uh, or eliminating the data files enabling users to use tools such as the azure data explorer access and work with 
every data item in their storage account and now the last one would be the when you need a real time data ingestion and the storage then you're going to utilize this as your data lake story so just to you know elaborate more on this point as your data lake storage can um, helpful for the real-time data uh, for data ingestion and directly from an instance of Apache Storm on Azure HD Insight or maybe Azure IoT Hub or Azure Events Hub or Azure Stream Analytics. It, it just works uh, with semi uh, structured also data. If you want to know, you could you know use the semi structured data also to let you ingest all your real time data into your storage account and then uh, run on that. So these are the use cases when we are going to utilize this data lake by this time you might have an adult when to choose as your blob storage versus as your data lake so now there are a few of the criteria I have defined here the first one would be the data type so when we talk about the data type the data type is good for storing a large volumes of text data then you would use the Azure data lake instead of the Azure blob storage uh, but it's good for storing unstructured non-text based data such as a photos videos backup etc can be utilized uh, can be stored on Azure blob storage now um, geographic redundancy if you are looking need to set up a replication of data and as your data lake you need to you know set it up but uh, when it comes to the Azure blob storage it's a by default it provides geo redundant storage just all you have to do is take that um, instead of the LRS you could just take that you know other GRS or other options and coming back to the namespace support this it's going to support the hierarchical names by uh, namespaces but here it's a flat namespace with the Azure blob storage coming back to the Hadoop compatibility so as you know the big data specific uh, Hadoop services can use the data stored on a data lake and this is definitely not store not supported or not compatible for Azure blob storage because Hadoop is uh, or Azure data lake is you know, def uh, designed for a big data purposes right but here blob is just you know stored such kind of you know text or video or photos or larger files to you know store it so this is not definitely not compatible coming back to the security you could grant more granular access with the data link but it's not going to support it this option within the azure blob storage so these are the security point of view that concludes the designing concepts for your Azure Data Lake. I hope this lecture is useful for you. Thank you for watching this. We'll catch you in the next lecture for Azure Data Bricks mostly.